2025 felt like a turning point for artificial intelligence, a year when AI truly broke through and became part of everyday life, from tools that save time and automate tasks to innovations that reshape entire industries. The pace of change has been remarkable. But what does that mean for the future of banking and work in general? I'm your host, Grant McDonald, and today on the Banking on AI podcast presented by TD Invent, we're joined by Jeff Chan, Senior Manager Enterprise Innovation here at TD, who spends his time looking beyond the headlines to explore where we're heading, and AI is a very big part of that. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm always intrigued by the work that you do at TD. Um, I feel like this year was a big year for AI. Like 2025 was a year that it hit mainstream and just went at the speed of light. I'm very curious as to how you see it, your take on that. Like, do you agree with that? This was a year for AI. It's de it was definitely a year for AI, but I think AI's gone through a couple of mainstream moments. I mean, AI's basically another component of the automation journey that the world's been on for for centuries now. You know, AI started almost 50, 60 years ago. It's had its ups and downs. It's had a couple of ups even prior to this. What makes it feel so mainstream this year, actually in the last two, three years, is because that little company that did what they did with that chatbot, it did three things pretty well. You can talk to it. It seemingly generates brand new content. And it's relatively cheap to deploy. And when I say cheap, I mean, before this thing came out, someone like a TD would have spent seven, eight figures to train something like this to put in front of their customers or colleagues. And now it's much cheaper. So I think that company, Chachi, with ChatGPT coming out, it did those three things. And suddenly, you don't need a computer science degree. You don't need an engineering degree. Suddenly, it's in the palm of your hands. As long as you can conversate with the thing, off you go. So Jeff, in the little intro that I do for this podcast, I talked a little bit about you, what you do here. Um, I think I got it pretty, pretty accurate, but I'm always curious as to how you describe what you do here at TD. Yeah, I, I'm very fortunate at TD. So my role is basically, I try to figure out what consumers want next and why. So I look at the intersection between shifts in emerging tech and consumer behavior. If I know where it's coming together, then I can help the bank reverse engineer what it means for product services and technology. That is extremely interesting. Um, you know, when we're thinking about what TD is doing and how it's doing right now, and we look at AI in the year that we've seen, how would you characterize it? How are we doing? Yeah, I think all bank TD, we're right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's not good, it's not bad, we're, we're right in the middle. And I think just like all banks, we're focused on productivity, efficiency, basically augmenting how our colleagues work today. Um, all the other bank, all the other banks are basically chasing the same thing right now. When you're having conversations with individuals here, and you're saying, "Okay, we're in the middle," what are you what are you talking about in terms of where we could be going to move a little bit, you know, in the right direction? Yeah, and I think the good news is we we are. That's the good news. Where I see the industry going with this technology is instead of generating content, we're actually training the AI to take action on things. And that's where we're going to start to see a lot of gains. We're going to start to see a lot of our internal processes being automated by this technology so that you and I can focus on the more value added opportunities that may be more complex or maybe too messy for an AI to frankly figure out because no matter where you work, processes are always messy. If a process is messy, an AI will likely fumble as much as a human does. Mm. So there's moments where the AI will come in and automate stuff complete actions. And then there's moments where we will come in, do what we need to do, and also supervise that AI. A lot of what you do, you know, when you're looking at these different parts of consumerism and how people are reacting, what they're doing, you know, 800 million users of ChatGPT weekly, that's a significant number. So you look at something like that, how are your feelings around adoption rate and where it's being used and where we can really start leaning in a little bit more? Yeah. So I, I get this question a lot. Um, I always say AI has always been here. The funny thing about AI is we tend to move the goalposts mentally. So as a society, what is classified as AI? If I can explain it, suddenly it's not AI. 
if I can't explain it, it's suddenly magical and it's AI. So yeah, ChatGPT, 800 million users. But if it wasn't for AI, Google wouldn't be around. If it wasn't for AI, Amazon couldn't tell us what to buy next. Netflix can tell us what to watch next. Tinder can tell us who to date next. So the and with the weather network, we, we know when rain would stop down to the nearest minute, right? So in terms of adoption, it's always been there. It's just that again, with ChatGPT, it's suddenly in the forefront. It was always playing this like behind the scenes magic thing. And now it's at the forefront. As long as you can talk to it, it seemingly can generate or take action on your behalf. And that's what's so magical about ChatGPT. When you look back at the past 12 months or so, um, I mean, even before that, people always have the November 2022 date in their mind. They just, there was a significant moment. I'm curious from all the research that you've been doing this year, do you have some key moments that you see, okay, that's interesting. I think that's going to have an impact. And not to your point, like specifically AI, but all things around it. Have there been moments that stood out to you? Yeah, looking back, things like um, when the term was coined in the 50s to our own Canadian Dr. Jeffrey Hinton doing what he did with neural networks and, and advocating for that, even when AI had that period, we call it an AI winter, when people weren't p focusing on it, but he just kept pushing because there wasn't enough compute power, there wasn't enough horsepower to bring to life what he wanted to do. And then suddenly about 10, 20 years ago, suddenly we got the horsepower we needed to bring his research to life. And now he's celebrated, right? So that's definitely one. ChatGPT is a huge moment again, because we broke through that barrier of, it was difficult to talk to a machine. Now it's not. And if I look ahead, for me, what's interesting is not AI by itself. It's when AI collides with other disruptions. So AI with blockchain, AI with spatial computing, AI with robotics, AI with uh, nuclear fusion, AI with quantum computing. When these things start coming together, that's when things get, I won't say more exciting, but more exciting. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go into like, look into a crystal ball. Um, I mean, I might later, but I am very curious about the conversations that you have, I'm sure people question number one, what are the risks associated with this? Um, what's sort of your response to that? What's your go-to in terms of saying, we, we need to lean into this, but we can be careful as well? Yeah, so about 10 years ago, we started this era of move fast and break things, 10, 20 years ago. And it, that term was popularized by Facebook, frankly. Move fast and break things. Zuckerberg used to have posters that said that on campus. Well, we've passed that era. We're now in the era of slow down and fix things. That's why when we talk about this topic, even the questions you're asking me today, they're not so, oh my God, what could we build? It's what should we build? And what questions should we ask ourselves? So when I have the opportunity to talk to colleagues, students, even my own parents, I always say, we should all keep asking these questions because we have to slow down, we have to fix things. The only industry that should be moving, in my opinion, the only industry that should be moving fast and breaking things are government. They need to catch up. They need to catch up with the rules. You're likely going to hopefully see more countries coming up with safety privacy laws that govern and protect both you and I and the companies that do business with us. Or you're going to see countries come together in a more coordinated fashion to create those rules. And you'll see them updated constantly. And that's what they need to do now. It's, it's the government's turn to update these laws as quickly as possible. Um, it, it's, I mean, you've hit it right on in terms of the policy being, it, it is naturally designed to be slower moving and now it's up against something that moves extremely fast. When we look at, you touched on it already, we can now talk to essentially a computer. Yeah. What other moments do you see where it became easier for consumers to actually interact with this stuff and not necessarily be afraid of it? Yeah, so probably would have started in like the 80s with the little prompt. And then in the 90s, when the Apples and the Microsofts of the world created the mouse interface, the GUI interface, that made things more practical. Again, my background is computer science. So we've been on this journey of trying to create machines we could talk to basically as easy as possible. And the easiest way for humans to communicate is through language. And now we can use language, everyday language, to talk to a machine. I love hearing that example because, I mean, essentially like the game Solitaire and a few others were put on the computer so people could start using the mouse properly, if, yeah. I, if I recall. And it's those little cues uh, that you see. I'm, I'm curious in terms of 
how the perception has shifted when you chat with people about AI? Like what, what is the change that you're seeing or hearing out there? Yeah, consumers, actually, in general, people are as excited as they are concerned about this. And again, that's the era we live in now. And they ask a lot of questions around privacy. They ask a lot of questions around addiction. And you've seen OpenAI talk about a term called parasocial relationships with technology. And again, it, it didn't start with ChatGPT because we've seen this behavior in Asian countries where certain adults grow um, a relationship with avatars, digital avatars. Mm -hmm. And that started before. Now, this chatbot isn't just a visual represent representation of who they want to, to be with. It can actually talk back and forth. Right? So there's a lot of concerns around, again, addiction, quote unquote, unhealthy relationships, privacy. But there's also a lot of excitement because, again, without AI, we likely would not have discovered the vaccine that would allow us to be in this room together five years after a brand new virus was discovered. Right? So there's a lot of good that AI can bring, and there's also a lot of bad. I never want to blame the technology. Mm -hmm. Technology is not bad. It's the person who uses it that could make it good or bad. You know, it, it's a very good point in terms of that, the, the speed behind it. And at an institution like ours at TD, we are a very large organization. Um, we have a goal of move, moving faster, a bit simpler. What industries are you seeing doing a pretty good job uh, incorporating AI into their day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I see like any industry, industry that wants a competitive edge will use it. So retail. Before TD, I was in retail. I was in commerce. And they use it. Wrap a lot for personalization. Again, the next best action you should take or the next item or the next movie you should watch. So you see a lot of AI there. I'm even seeing in entertainment, you're starting to see them use it for creative development. Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, for instance, they're using AI to do virtual dubbing of actors and actresses. So you can speak in English in a movie and the AI will literally dub not just the sound and tone of your voice, but your facial movements too. And that's already on Netflix. So when you look at all of the things that you see in your day-to-day, -day, the stuff that we talked about today, what's the main message that you're trying to leave people? Or is there one? Or is there several where you're saying, here's what you really need to be thinking about over the next year? Because I see this as just, it's just going to keep getting faster. Yeah. I always say, don't think of AI. It's just a tool. Innovation is about solving a problem in a new or different way to generate some value for that end user. So focus on the problem. If you focus on the problem and then in your mind, wave a magic wand of what idea could solve that problem and then think about the solution itself, like AI, if it, if it happens to be uh, AI. If people are focused on AI, I always say just be mindful of how you're using it. We should continue to ask ourselves these questions so that we build a system that is very transparent, ethical, responsible, and democratized for every, anyone and everyone to use. Excellent. Now, you mentioned earlier, we were asking the question, what should we build? But I, I have to ask you, because you're sitting here, what, what could we build? What could actually come of a few different things? There's got to be a few standouts where you say, this is a crowd pleaser. I'm going to let them know what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so right now, we're focused on AI as this thing locked behind a screen. The next phase of AI, if we want to generate the most value out of it, it needs to jump out there. It needs to be in real life. And the term that's popping up is called physical AI. So physical AI is the collision of three or four disruptors, mainly AI, uh, robotics, and advanced sensors. And you and I have an advanced sensor. If we have an Apple Watch, that's an, that's an advanced sensor. So when these things collide, AI can actually take action in real life to complete anything we want, almost anything we want. An example of a physical AI thing today are self-driving cars. So a self-driving car with robotics alone can't happen. A self-driving car with AI alone can happen. Or with advanced systems alone can't happen. But when they all came together, suddenly we have self-driving cars. So for me, that's one of the next things that are, that are coming that I'm, I'm both uh, excited for and maybe a bit concerned. Well, listen, I so appreciate taking the time to sit down today. Thank you for answering my question about what could possibly happen in the future. Um, it, is, it is really interesting to hear 
you know, all the insights that you do day to day. So thank you so much. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you.